it's um, a wet and rainy um, weekend in Melbourne today. So um, there's um, some projects I've been working on. Um, I've actually been stripping down some pallets. I want to start using some pallet wood, but I wanted to try and give the pallet wood a bit of a nice finish. So I've brought out the old um, planer or thicknesser, which I haven't used for a while. I'm going to basically show you how to um, change and sharpen the blades. Because you'll see I'll take you through some stuff now. My blades are very dull and I'll show you how you can tell that is the case. So yeah, so let's get started. I'll show you what the issue is first up. All right, so what we're gonna do is feed some timber through it. Now it's actually off at the moment, but, um, and there's these teeth at the start to stop the anti-kickback, just stop it. So you'll see it takes a little bit of force initially, but that actually went through really easy. So now the thickness of this is about 18 mil and this is currently sitting at about 22. So we're actually gonna drop it down a little bit more. And it's best to, to start as high as possible because again, I've just jammed it in a little bit and you can't pull it back. Again, still it's quite high. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start her up and then start feeding it through and then just keep slowly dropping the, the, the height. Uh, we'll probably do half turn at the time uh, and then when we start to feel it grab, then we'll start doing probably quarter turns. And then I'll show you the problem I've got at the moment where the blade ain't sharpening. Also the blade on this is 318 mil. So um, again, you can feed it through in the middle, got stuck again, or you can feed it through on the side. Okay, so let's go. So I'll show you what's happening there. So in the middle, it wasn't contacting with the blade at all. On this side, it wasn't contacting with the blade at all. But on this side, it actually did a little bit. And you can see it's taken a little bit off the top. Um, and again, the issue there is the blade is dull. Uh, it needs to be taken out and sharpened um, or definitely readjusted, okay? So what we'll do now is um, we'll take the blade out and have a look. So let's make it easy. I've got on my little trolley. Let's put this around to this side here. All right, so we've got a compartment up here. Now it comes with a little Allen key. Um, I find it's easier just to use a screwdriver. So there's four screws on the back here. Now obviously before you do this, again, make sure that it is switched off and unplugged um, to be safe. Uh, we don't want any uh, accidents happening. And again, these blades are normally really sharp um, and you don't want your hands near them, especially with um, them rotating at any time soon. All right, so we've taken all four bolts off. Okay, so now you get the little compartment up here. Nice and easy, pop them in there so we don't lose anything. Um, so this is the cover. As I mentioned, there's a chain there. And again, I wouldn't be tempted to, to disengage that. Um, I don't want you forgetting to um, put it back on. All right, again, remembering it is unplugged. So there we've got the drum with the blades. Now this has got one, it's actually got two blades on it. Okay, so I'll take you in for a little bit of a close up. So there's the blades there, okay, now it's hard to tell, 
but um, yeah, I mean they're not sharp at all actually. And it actually looks like it's dipping in the middle a little bit because of overuse in the one position. And this is where potentially when you're actually sliding wood through the, the thickness are, you probably should slide some here. Especially if you've got thin strips, don't always push them through the middle. Put, do one here, one here, one here, and just keep the process going just to maintain the wear on the blade. Otherwise, if you just put it in the middle all the time, you're just gonna have the constant wear. Obviously, if you're doing a wide board, that's a different story. All right, so what we're gonna do now is there's these nuts here. We need to um, get their little tool to loosen those, uh, and then we'll pop the blade out. All right, so this is the little tool it comes with, and you've got two different sizes. And they go anti-clockwise. Now these blades have actually never ever been out. So these are the original blades from when I first bought it. Now there's two little holes, which is just helping lift the blade out. It's just a little bit at a time. Actually, there's quite a bit of gunk in there. So what we're gonna do is give it a bit of a spray out. All right, woohoo, there we go. Okay, so so there's okay. right. so there's our blade. Now you can get double-sided blades, but these are actually single-sided. Um, and again, that's three hundred and nineteen mil. So we're going to have a go at. Um, sharpening this we'll see actually how worn it is in the middle um, and based on what I've seen these are at a, a 45 degree angle so we're gonna have to make up a bit of a jig to be able to sharpen this um, or we're gonna need to get some new blades okay all right but while this is out and while this is all open we'll um, give everything a good clean out yeah we'll give everything a good clean out and then we've also got the, the other blade to remove uh, and then we'll work out how to sharpen this up. Let's hope the next one's a bit quicker. Right, so that one was a lot easier. Um, same sort of deal, you can see a slight indentation in the middle. Okay. Uh, another thing too, um, I'm not sure if you, you wouldn't have noticed it, but there's actual um, springs in there. So it is actually spring loaded, which, and the reason for that is we've got this little device here, which actually helps set the height of the blades. So basically when you pop the blades back in, you actually pop that on top and then that gets gets the blade to the exact height. So I'll show you that um, when we're putting it back in. Okay. And again, similar deal with this one. Okay, so this one's actually pushed in a bit, so maybe it's specifically designed like that. 
and then this one's protruding out a little bit, a bit more. But yeah, simple, just do as much of the screws in. Um, and you can see with those two, they just put pressure up on the other side of the drum and it's actual pressure, which actually is what holds it in place. Point to mention is when you spin the drum, um, the springs will fall out. <laughs> so I'm gonna have fun uh, retrieving those now. Um, so make sure when you take the blades out, um, I would take the screws out, take the springs out with it. That's the spring. Screwdrivers. The sawdust is endless. <laughs> Okay, so what I've done is I've just cleaned all the gunk off the blade, so I haven't sharpened it or anything. But um, we've got a nice straight edge. But I don't know if you can you can see that the edges are touching, but there's basically a bit of sunlight in the middle, uh, and that's because the blade's been heavily used in the middle and it's wearing. Um, and then what's also happened is that over a period of time too, the blade has basically pushed in also. Um, so it's actually not protruding out at its right level. And we'll check the specs of this Ryobi planer and see how many mils uh, that this has to be proud of the drum. And we'll get that setting right. And then we'll get this blade. Now you can see over here, there's a few little chips in the blade. And that's from the odd nail, basically piece of timber not being to nail properly so it will do damage to the blade and at the end of the day I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of that but we'll do our best so you can have some slight imperfections you know some slight imperfections in the timber when you're playing but again you can sand that out so all right let's work out um, how we sharpen those up now that we've got the blades out I'll show you what we're going to do so I've made this, this little jig up here, right? And all these you can see, it's really straight, straightforward and simple. Now this is just a bit, a bit of off-cut of hardwood, it's actually a harker trove. Um, but what I've done is I've just cut two slots at a 45 degree angle. And then that will enable us to be able to slot the blades in. Like so. Alright, so now this is a quick and easy one. Now, if I had a bigger piece of hardwood, ideally I would have made something a bit bigger, um, just to make sure we don't um, catch our fingers on it. Uh, but that's what I have lying around at the moment. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll do another video where I actually probably make a proper one of these. Now, the idea of this is basically these are cut at 45 degree angles. And then the depth of these cuts is kind of irrelevant, but you want a good meat a good portion of the blade to be actually in the slot. Now I've just cut it absolutely perfectly. So I don't know if you can see, but we're basically just one or two mil proud of the actual timber. But at the end of the day, they're both at a 45 degree angle. Okay. And then if you've got a, a belt sander, you can use that, but the actual sandpaper that I have on my belt saver is a bit too rough, a bit too coarse. So what I've done is I've just got a bit of sandpaper, I've stuck it down to a flat surface. Um, and then you'll go through all the, the various different grades um, up to as fine as you've got. Um, so it just so happens I've got um, 80, 120 and 240. So 240 is the finest I've got on me today. So that's going to have to make do. Um, but ideally you'd want to go up to say a 1200 or a 1500 grit. Okay. And now that they're in place, um, basically flip it over. And what we're going to do... 
is at that 45 degree angle. And again, I've already gone through the 80 grit and the 120. And now I'm just going through the final one. And again, make sure you're consistently, the blades are actually bigger than this piece of sandpaper. But just make sure you're consistently going back and forth in a circular motion. And again, it's going to be very a bit difficult for you to see in the light, but you can see that's working quite nicely. And then what we'll do is with the flat side, same sort of thing. And we've got stuff brand new. So uh, I'm not gonna try and test how sharp it is, but that's looking quite good. Okay, and again, keep going for as long as you want um, or as little as you want. Again, the more effort you put into it, the better the finish you'll have. Um, and we'll check the other one. And again, okay. All right, so they're ready now. Pop back into um, the thicknesser. Clean it up, get all the excess sawdust. Cool. That's all done. We've got the blades done. All the grooves in here. They're all nice and clean. No excess because you tend to get a bit of a build up uh, in the bits and pieces. All right. So first and most importantly, let's get these springs back in. Put on the end of your little screwdriver. Pop it in. Okay. Pop on your screwdriver the spring. Slot that in. Next one. Slot, slot that in. So with this bar. Just screw them all in. Just makes it nice and easy. Okay, make sure the cup is facing up and the flat facing down, and then screws towards you. Drop that in place. Okay, grab the blade, flat bit facing you. Okay, and 45 in. Drop it in there. And again, line it up. Okay, and then start tightening up. Make sure the blades lock into the bar. Make sure it's centered on the drum. Make sure it can spring up and down. Pop your guide on. All right, so blades are nicely back in. All right, so one thing I'll stress with this gauge, 
right, is that the blade must touch here, where it says one millimeter. So the first time I popped it in, I set it to here, and the, the blades were just a little, little bit too high. You know, obviously there's a couple of mil difference. So you need to make sure you set it to that point there. Okay. All right, we'll pop the safety cover back on. Before we start her up. Let's grab a piece of timber from before. So what we'll do is we'll dial this up a fraction, just in case, because the blade height's different. Again, both sides, as you can see, are the best. Okay, so we'll start feeding these in and then slightly adjusting the height, and we'll go from there. All right, it's plugged in. <laughs> That's a pretty nice finish now. That probably needs a little bit more there. But um, yeah, so sharpening those plates, repositioning them, absolutely work wonders. Uh, and again, like I said, the blade had worn quite a bit in the middle. So you've got to make sure that you feed middle, centre, side, especially when you're using thin strips. And yeah so that's about it guys so that's about it so i hope you enjoyed that um and again it's quite a good machine it, sometimes you can get sniping where the t piece of timber does get stuck but you just got to be mindful especially with the short pieces again don't get your fingers anywhere near it but as you're forcing it through basically be at the other side to help pull it through um just to keep it flowing consistently because when it does stop you get it, it digs in and that's the way to avoid it obviously if you've got long pieces it's a lot more easier i don't know if you can see on this side there's a bit of a sniping on this side whereas this side is pretty much perfect all the way through i can only see one little mark here okay but again it's a pretty good machine the ryobi again like i said i've had it for quite a few years now and it hasn't been a problem obviously you can sharpen the blades or you can just go and buy new blades but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy if it does the job. So again, if you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, below in the comments. Um, if you like what I'm doing on the channel, hit subscribe. And again, it's a, a rainy Saturday afternoon here in Melbourne, Australia. And I think that's it for the night. It's getting a bit dark. Better go inside and uh, some dinner. All right, till next time. See you guys.